Jason Jacobs with Techware Labs. Uh, we're providing coverage of CES 2015. We're here at the SANS Convention Center covering a technology that may well change the game for water cooling enthusiasts out there. This is Captherm Systems, and they have a phase change cooler that uh, is self-contained and uses some really, really cutting edge tech. Please tell me a little bit more. I'm Timo Mings, CEO at uh, Captherm, and we developed a two-phase, multi-phase cooling technology uh, that is based on a solid state approach and is effectively uh, directly aimed at uh, replacing existing water cooling technology. Exactly how does it work? Tell me a bit about uh, this explosion I see going on in the background. So in order to, uh, to be able to uh, bring the technology to market, we had to create a uh, hermetic um, enclosure in order to contain the fluid for the phase change effect. Uh, this is truly hermetically sealed in the military sense that there is no diffusion of any sort. On a helium uh, leak detector mass spectrometer, we're typically in the range of about a helium or a, a sugar cube of helium gas uh, of leakage over 3,000 years. That is amazing. That is certainly something that no water cooler could come close to. Uh, we estimate because of that, um, this is not really a, a choice that we had, but we had to create this hermetic enclosure, and as a result of that, we estimate the uh, mean time between failure or mean time to failure to be in the range of approximately 100 years. Somehow, I don't think the system is still going to be running at the end of 100 years. Probably not. Um, we're, we're looking forward to bringing more and more innovation on the market on an annual basis as well, so there will be performance improvements. This is still a very early or a, a, the first revision of the product of a new technology. Uh, we do see great opportunity to, to even improve on the thermal performance further as we go along. And uh, the thermal performance is due to a couple of factors. You were telling me a bit about how you combine those metals together to make, to make this cooler. Correct. So in order to, uh, to combine the different materials that we need, we have uh, copper at the very bottom for thermal conductivity. Uh, we have stainless steel to be able to fusion weld a side glass into it so people can observe the phase change effect. Uh, we use a, a 20 thou layer of titanium in order to avoid the creation of brittle iron containing inner layers between the traditionally incompatible metals of stainless steel and aluminum. And then we go to, uh, to different aluminum alloys in order to connect a low weight aluminum heat exchanger condenser to the assembly. Typically these metals are too dissimilar, too highly dissimilar. They're actually on the exact opposite ends of the spectrum um, and typically considered unweldable to one another. So since traditional means were, were no option for us in that regards, e-beam welding, laser beam welding, friction welding, we had to resort to more unconventional means, uh, which for us meant explosion welding, which can be seen in the video behind me here. Well, that's, that's really cool. Uh, tell me a bit about how the actual phase change works and, and how does the radiator that sits on top of it work? Sure. So the uh, phase change effect, in essence, if we look at air cooling and water cooling, which everybody knows and is familiar with, we're staying in the single phase. We're taking a medium, either air or water, heating it up and cooling it down to transfer heat. Um, we're effectively um, working with a specific heat of those substances, either air or water. If we're going to multi-phase, we're going to um, heat of vaporization, which uh, if we compare water in that regards, water, one kilogram, to heat that up by one degree Celsius, takes roughly four point some odd kilojoules of energy. If we wanted to evaporate one kilogram, one liter of water, uh, it will take about 2,000 kilojoules of energy. So there's a 500 times gain in, um, in, in uh, heat absorption capacity on, on equal um, volumetric uh, size. So as, a, as compared to a air cooler or your traditional water cooling that everybody's familiar with, this is not only sealed and good for pretty much the life of any product that you're going to own, but also much more efficient. Yes, we beat um, all-in-one water coolers, which is our primary uh, competitor with this form factor. We typically beat by about 30% on the thermal performance, which translates to roughly four to six degrees on a single fan unit. All right, and I see you've got two units back here, the MP1120 and the MP1240. You were telling me that those are rated at two different TDP wattage uh, ability to absorb. Uh, tell me which one is which. Correct. So the MP1120 comes with a one or dual 120-millimeter uh, fan configuration. It dissipates up to 275 watts. If we go to the, to the larger unit, the MP1240, which is a dual or quad fan capable uh, unit, we can increase TDP to about 325. Um, but ultimately, we are limited by the, by the, uh, the multi-phase base, and it's not really 
uh, cannot really be improved upon uh, by increasing the radiator size. So we're able to increase thermal performance by another 30% um, over MP 1120, but then eventually we, we are stuck uh, with the performance of the base, which is going to be one of those areas that we can improve on in the future. At the same time, if I look at a 325 or a 275 watt TDP, uh, very, very few trips actually output that, that amount of heat. Yeah, nothing comes close right now. When, when can our readers expect to actually see a product hit the market? So we, um, we, we, uh, the company was incorporated in February 2011. Uh, we have spent two and a half years conducting, three years conducting hardcore R&D. Uh, allocated a total of 2.5 million dollars in order to bring the technology to, to perfect the technology. What is unique about Captherm is that the cooler is actually 98% made in North America. Um, we do all 90% of that manufacturing portion ourselves. We're creating all of the infrastructure, all of the manufacturing know-how ourselves, which includes things like machining the explosion welded material, machining four or five different alloys at once, which typically is not done in the machining world. Um, we're investing another $1.5 million into manufacturing equipment and, and our facility there. Are currently definitely in uh, manufacturing ramp activities and expect the product to ship at the end of May. So, for you guys that are interested in uh, pretty much outdoing water cooling as you know it and uh, adding some uh, a bit more flair to your rig in a, in a way that almost nobody else is going to have, you can look forward to this uh, Q2, Q3 this year? Q2 this year, if all goes well. And what's the price point going to be on these two models? Uh, 249 for MP1120 and 299 for MP1240. Very cool. You saw it here first. Stay tuned for more continuing coverage, techwarelabs.com.